because forgiveness is an important part. It's an important value in, in our Christian lives. We want to be able to forgive. And as believers, we know about forgiveness. We talk about forgiveness. And we even expect forgiveness. But we do. But do we really understand it? Because we know when we say we forgive something, and I can admit to the early years of our marriage, you know, it might have been times when I'll say, I forgive you for that. But as soon as a another situation come up, I'll say, you remember when? But my husband would say, well, I thought you forgave me for that. I did at that point. But now it's a different situation. But when you forgive someone of that same situation, you're not supposed to bring it back up. You, you leave it alone. You might not forget about it, but you leave it alone. You've forgiven them for that particular situation. And just going through lately, you know, just reading over material and just doing a lot of research, I've really just been researching a lot on different things. And, um, and it was funny how, you know, we've been talking about forgiveness and love and how this particular study came about that I'll be, um, te we'll be teaching from t today. So if we can go ahead and turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Chapter 6 at verse 9, read again. After the manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And we forgive those, I'm sorry, excuse me. And forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we got to understand that as long as we forgive our fellow Christians, our fellow non-believers, that our Father will forgive us. We can't hold on to grudges. We can't, you know, dwell in that same situation over and over again. And I always say, you're holding your blessing back for not forgiving the person, but you always ask the Lord to forgive you, but you don't forgive somebody else. And you have to forgive, you know, them for their sins or your sin. But like Pastor was said, it's something about that pride was hold a man or a woman back to, to being, a, I guess, a better person. Or if a, a, a Christian and believer, it's, it's not about pride. If you want your blessing from the Lord, you have to forgive and let go. And like I said, in today's world, people think it's hard. It's not hard. But in order for you to get your blessing, you have to forgive and let it be done so you can continue on and um, live your life where the Lord can continue to bless you. So the first part of the section we want to talk about is what are the four responses that are not truly forgiveness? And what, the first one says, asking God to forgive someone hurting you. Number two, simply struggling off the offense because we know there'll be offenses, there'll be afflictions that's gonna come upon us that we may have to forgive. We may not always like a situation or, you know, if someone um, does something to you and I can, all I can do is keep using myself and where God has brought me because there'll be times, you know, somebody may say something and I don't, you know, like it or I'll be like, oh really, or you'll, roll your eyes or give them a certain look and be like, you know, whatever, you know. 
But we got to forgive. We got to let it go and forgive. The and I always say, let go and let God handle it. Because when you're trying to handle it in your, your way or your direction, however, it never works out. And you end up getting the bad part of the deal because you won't let go and let God handle it. So, you know, therefore, like my wife said, you know, it's, you got to let go. And um, it's, it's not about that being that pride for yourself to where well, I'm a better man or I'm a better woman. Let it go and let God handle it. And, and I've even seen people where they'll say, well, you know, I see that person over there being blessed and doing this and doing that, and I know they don't go to church, and I know they don't tithe, and I know they don't do this, but then they look at their self and say, well, I'm in church every Bible study, every Sunday service. I'm, I'm tithing, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. Why am I not getting that blessing? But you got to realize, is it something in your heart that you haven't, forgiving someone for it because that could be the very reason that your blessing is being blocked. Your blessing is being held back. So you got to, once again, you got to let it go and forgive. And once you begin to forgive those things, you'll see those blessings begin to manifest in your own life. And I always say it, it could not, it might, it might not be your time or your seasoning. I mean, why, why you want the Lord to plant you when you know you're not ready to be blossomed? A lot of people, you know, want it fast, but when they're giving it, you know, being given it to them, they don't know how to control the little hand it. But this is what you want it. But now that you got it, what you going to do with it? And the third reason is forgetting that the offense occurred. And number four, trying to figure out why the person hurt you. Because sometimes you might not even, the person may not have even hurt you. So you got you to think about that because you can go to somebody and say, well, what was the very reason you're upset with that person or you won't forgive them? And a lot of times they're going to say, I don't even know. Or I have my reasons. But they don't want to tell you what their reasons is because it really probably wasn't no reason at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and because we know that forgiveness is the action of forgiving or being forgiven. And if we could turn to Matthews 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And I'm going to just keep on reading. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And verse 17, if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and publican. So we got to, you know, when, when something occurs and somebody's done something that you may not forgive, you got to bring that situation to them right away. Bring it to them, talk to them at that, that moment. Don't wait a day or wait two days or a week or years because we begin to forget what the situation was even about. And then if they don't, then you may want to bring someone else to help you with the situation, help you with whatever that issue is because it may not even be a big issue or problem at all. So the, the second section, it talks about, so we, I'm going to back up just a few minutes. So it says, in light of all your teachings now, how would, you know, how would you approach forgiveness for what you know and what the word of God is? Think about some of those times back in the day before your Christian life, you know, how would you handle that situation now? How would you approach it? 
because you're you're gonna approach it a lot different now than what you did in your before Christ days. Because you always say, "What would the Lord do, or what would Jesus do?" And a lot of times, our reaction comes first before we think. But then, when you're trying to think about it, it's too late because you already don't put in action. But I can say, "What would Jesus do in the process?" So you got to think about what you're gonna do before you start reacting. And, you know, just think about your relationships and the things you go through daily and and look at it and say, however you're acting, it reveals your relationship with God. So if you say that you are a true believer and you're a Christian and you're living that life, your life should reflect that. It shouldn't be if I'm acting one way in here, when I step foot outside of these four walls, I should be still living that same life. And it's going to show how you react to others. And that goes to back to what Mother Perry said earlier in us speaking about, you know, this city is hurt, not only this city, but a whole lot of places in the United States and around the world. But it starts at home. You know, you train a child up, you know, a child mimics what his father or his elders doing in their present eye. And like I always say, you know, you're not born racist, you're taught racist. But that's just like being in, you know, a Christian. If you know that your mother and father is a Christian, they're going to teach you just like they are Christian. They're going to bring you up the same way they was raised. So it always starts at home on, on, on you know, how a child is raised, and they continue on to their adult life. And at the same time, you know, kids can kind of stray away, but they never forget how they was raised about being a Christian. And that just made you say, because I used to always have people say, well, how do you know what your children are doing once you're out of your sight, once they're out of your sight? I don't know what they're doing. All I can hope is what I've taught them inside my home, that it would carry on to wherever they are. So I know their ways, I know their actions, but once they get out of my presence, I don't know how they're acting. I'm hoping they act the way that we've taught them, we've trained them, you know, through, throughout the years of their life. Um, I can remember sometimes when we would go to football games and just to hear how some of these teenagers would talk or talk to their parents, I would be quick to turn around and be like, are you serious? You know, and I'd always look at my, my kids, whichever one was sitting next to me that wasn't out on the field. And I'd look and they'd, you, you ain't got to worry about that because we, we already know. <laughs> Like, okay, we can just making that, you know, understanding, you know, make sure we've taught you the right, the right way to do something, not the wrong way. That's not how you should be acting in public. And sometimes, like my wife was saying back on the field, I'll take that young man or that young lady and I, and I pull him to the side and, and talk to him like an adult. Because sometimes, you know, when you show such hard on them, they don't know how to react to that harsh, mean, that meaningful ways. And I always say the tone of voice set the whole mood of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I pull them to the side and say, excuse me, sir. And I, and I you know, treat them like that with respect. And the first thing they said is, man, thank you. Nobody never talked to me like that. I said, well, it's all about respect. I'm giving you respect. I res- you know, respect, respect, respect from you because there's other adults and kids around this, man. So be polite. And then, you know, they thank me a lot throughout the time they see me until they don't see me no more. They remember that guy showing me respect. And they said, thank you. So it, 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 it carries a long way by giving respect if you want to receive respect. But some of them, they don't have it because they wasn't trained. And, you, and like I said, you can learn no matter how old you are or how young you are. Somebody can be your teacher. And like my wife said, we have been taught a lot here. And not only taught here, we've been taught in our homes. And we taught our kids. And we deliver the same message that we've been, you know, delivered from our pastors and our, you know, youth family throughout grace and truth. And I just want to share an example. There was a young guy that lives down the street from us, and one day Greg, you know, saw him, and he's one of the guys, he's walking around with his pants almost to his knees. So I'm like, first of all, how can you walk like that? And he actually called a young man over, and, you know, he's like, you know, why are you even walking like this? And I think he used the comment or something about he's an upcoming expiring rapper. And Greg was like, well, that don't give you the right to, you know, wear your pants like that. So he pulled them up, straightened them up, and, you know, thanked them. But sometimes we have to look at ourselves, too, as Christians because, again, the world is so crazy now. It's so divided. People are fearful 
to go and talk to some of these youth now because you don't know what's going to happen or what's going to, you know, come about the situation or if they're going to come back and try to retaliate against you. So we got to know that we have the armor of God and that he's going to protect us at all times. Amen. So the second section is granting forgiveness to others. And we're going to turn to Ephesians 4 and verse 31. Granting forgiveness to others. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So sometimes, like my husband was saying, you know, your tone of voice, the way you're talking to people, you, you want to speak positive into individuals' life, not negative. Um, and I'll, again, I'll use myself, for example, at work, you know, there's a young lady who's always speaking negative about things you know if somebody does that you know it's not right or it's you know it's just not right and we can't speak negative in people's lives you gotta find the positive in the situation or if you have a positive way of doing it mention it bring it up to the you know the plate or bring it to the table and my wife mentioned about the young lady and and i hear about it daily but it, it, it's, you know, it, it's, I, I, I always tell my wife, man, you know, just pray for her. But it, it irks me at the same time, too, because, you know, you hear from another race, because the first thing they say is, oh, that's got to be the north side. Or oh, they got to be doing this. I mean, it, it's, it's like they can't do it in Mandarin, or they can't do it in Ponte Vedra, or they can't do it over here. So it's, it's almost stereotyping one race when something bad happened. And I'm like, man, you stronger than me because I'd have been on, you know, let her know something. But I don't understand. It's a workplace, and this how you handling this. But it's like she has nothing positive to say when it comes about our race or this particular side of the town. They think the north side is all black. And I'm like, come on. So I have to stay <laughs> prayed up. I have to forgive. And I can say, you know, with me forgiving, because sometimes if we forgive and continue to pray about the situation, you begin to start seeing a difference in that person because, you know, God is working on your behalf of some of the things. So, you know, for days, you know, I would sometimes just go in there, I'd pray about it, but I'd sit at my desk and do my work and not say anything. But I'll make sure, you know, good morning, because it was a point where it wouldn't even say good morning. So now, I, good morning, how are you today? Or, you know, whatever the situation, I try to turn it around into that positive situation. Because again, like I said, we're gonna have offenses and afflictions that pop up in our lives at all times, but how are we gonna deal with it? How are we gonna handle it? And forgiveness is one of the biggest things. And it says, granted forgiveness to others sometimes seems unreasonable, or maybe we just don't know how to go about doing it. The whole idea of forgiving goes against our nature, but the Bible not only tells me, but the Bible show you know, it shows you how to forgive. And it got and I got on and said, why isn't it so difficult to forgive? First, because we don't know how or what to say. Number two is pride. Number three, we don't want to forgive. And those are three big, difficult things, you know. How do you do it? How do you approach it? But like we said in the previous scripture, you know, go to your brethren. Talk to your brethren about the situation. If that doesn't work, then you bring one or two more with you to help the situation. If that doesn't, then you take it to the church. And we know one of the biggest things is pride because that that person just don't want to give in. That person 
don't want to say anything, but we have to be, you have to realize you have to be the be better person in the situation. You got to knock pride out the way and go on and forgive that that person. And you look at all kind of ways to forgive. You know, you may have, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband who may have did something that person don't want to forgive. And you begin to see that when you're at family functions or you're at events and you're like, wow, they wasn't, you know, they used to be like the life of the gathering, the life of the party, but now they're standoffish. Something is going on in that situation. Something's not right. And that just keeps, you know, family and friends apart because that pride or that unforgiveness, it, it, it separates us. But we as, you know, family wants to have family gathering or, or family reunions, but if somebody is, is bickering and fussing about something that happened 30 years ago, and I'm not going because what she did or what she said or what he, whoever said, and, and then that just holds back the generation for knowing who their family are. I mean, because here it is, like, you know, pal to say, you know, a while back in a couple of his, you know, messages, you don't know who your brother or who your sister is because you never attend that family function. And now when you got, you know, family interacting, dating one another, they just don't know because you never took your kid or that, you know, husband or wife around your family member to get to know who each other is. You know, that that's forgiveness, it's in that pride. But they just won't let it go. But they don't realize that it's blocking their blessings. Why everybody else is being blessed, you wonder why? Sit back and think. It's yourself. Something that you're not letting for go, letting go and forgiving. It ain't it ain't hard and definitely ain't easy. But you know, you still gotta talk to the Lord, you know, and and, and ask for forgiveness. And you gotta forgive too. Amen. So and we know that other relationships are important with our our relationships with others are important to God because he wants us to get souls saved, you know. So we got to make sure that we, we are doing right by others. The next part is how to forgive. Because we know sometimes, you know, the person, they just don't know how to. Um, and it gives some examples in here. First, you got to realize and admit your part in the conflict. So, you know, admitting and that's just like when we do things wrong or that is not godly, we have to repent to God. So in this situation, we got to realize, you know, what the situation is, what the conflict is, and, you know, what part did we play in it? Well, some of them would not take a half part, but they don't want to admit that they had some fault in it. One thing to do, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It had to be one of y'all. Because we, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in because it's both of y'all fault. But it's, it's, somebody is going to always say it's not me. The second example it gives is, of course, this should have been four months first. You know, ask, ask Jesus, who is our ultimate forgiver, to empower you, you remembering that he has forgiven you. So we have to realize, and I'm just going to read that one more time. Ask Jesus, the ultimate forgiver, to empower you, remembering that he has forgiven you also. So if Jesus can forgive us, we can forgive others. The next section, section three, is seeking forgiveness from others. And we'll go into Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, 24, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. And the little passage says, you may think it's hard to forgive, but wait until you need to ask for forgiveness. So we sometimes we think it's hard to forgive, but wait until you need to be asked for forgiveness. 
because that situation is going to come about. That's one of the toughest things we have to do as Christians. Perhaps that's why the why the two do as Christians. I'm sorry. Perhaps that's why the two least heard words in the English language are I'm sorry, but it is really necessary and important. I'm sorry goes a long ways because sometimes, you know, even though you said I forgive you, that's a big, big step in it, but let them know you're sorry. You're sorry for whatever you've done to, you know, put that hurt on them, you know, and, you know, I'm sorry. And then I can say that, I mean, and I say, what are some of the excuses that people give to forsake forgiveness? You know, avoid people to um, avoid forsaking forgiveness. Number one, it happened po- before I was saved. And that, that's a big one because, you know, they'll say, well, that was before my saved days, so I, I don't need to forgive on it. But ultimately, you do have to forgive. Number two, what happened is significant. Number three, I don't know where that person is. Number four, I can't afford to make it right. And, of course, those are just some excuses people use to avoid seeking forgiveness. The next part of this, it talks about seven principles of asking for forgiveness. The first principle is, we'll go to 1 John 1 and 19. I'm sorry, it's 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And my little saying in here is saying, always start with God. Make sure your relationship with God is right. Number two is going to come from Matthew 5 and 25. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Least at any time the advisory deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. And the verbiage in here says, get a right perspective. Forgiveness is the choice of the person who has been hurt. Number three is coming from Psalms 51, verses 2 and 3. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. And this one says, take responsibility. So again, we got to take responsibility. Don't expect forgiveness, and don't, lose, don't base your response on whether the person offended will forgive you or not. So you can't worry about what that individual whether that individual is going to forgive you or not, take your responsibility and you forgive. And at the end of the day, knowing that you have done your part in Jesus' eyes, you should be all right because you have done your part, which is forgiveness. The next one um, is coming from Ephesians 4 and 26, and it says, I'm just going to read the passage first. Keep short accounts. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And scripture says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Then number five, and again, these are the seven principles of asking for forgiveness. Number five is coming from Matthews 18 and verse 15. And the, the message says, always maintain small circles. 
The scope of your confession is determined by the scope of your transgression. And again, Matthew 18 and 15 reads, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his faults between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Number six, it was come from Matthew 5, verse 23 and 24, reads, now I'm going to read a little footnote. Make your confession of personal. Go in person or in as personal a way as you can. And the scripture reads, verse 23, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembers thy brother hath aught, aught against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Number seven will come from Luke 19, chapter 19, verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man, my false accusations, I restore him fourfold. And the footnote will make amends, show that you have repent of your sins. And one of the little passages it says is, forgiveness is not an emotional response, it's an intellectual response. Forgiveness is not a choice. It is a choice. It's a choice, I'm sorry. Fruits and the, this is the last. The last part of the message is fruit of forgiveness. And there's seven of these also. So seven fruits of forgiveness. And just a footnote, forgiveness doesn't just patch things up. It actually makes you a better person. The benefits of forgiveness go further than most people can imagine. And I'll just read the little passages and give you the scriptures. Um, fruit number one, you become reconciled to the person from whom you were separated. And that came out of, again, Matthews 18 and 15. Fruit number two, you regain a right relationship with God, 1 John 4 and 20. Fruit number three, your prayer life is restored, Mark 11 and 25. Fruit number four, it, take away the, it takes away the bitterness in your life, Ephesians 4 verses 30 through 32. Fruit five, Forgiven might bring about revival, personal and or corporate. Philippians 4, verses 2 to 3. Fruit number 6, it ensures God has forgiven us. Matthew chapter 6, verses 12 through 14. And the last fruit, number 7, it brings us a clear conscience. And it's three um, verses from this, Titus 1 and 15, 1 Peter 3 and 16, and 1 Timothy 1 and 5. So forgiveness, we just got to make sure, you know, being God's children when we come upon these offenses and afflictions that we forgive. It may, t you know, you may take back a second or so, but forgive the situation. It's going to clear your mind. You won't be blocking your blessings. And know that God is going to guide you the rest of the way. So it's something holding you back from forgiveness, something that somebody has done to you. Maybe it was yesterday. Maybe it was 10 days ago. Maybe it was a year ago. You have to stop as a Christian and say, I forgive you, whether they are alive or whether they're dead and gone. But in order for you as a Christian to continue getting your blessing, you have to forgive and let go and let God handle it. Amen. Forgive.
seem repetitive, but faith cometh by what? Hearing. Come on, and hearing by what? By the word of God. Amen. And until you begin to, amen, be not only hearers, but doers of God's word. Amen. And uh, we got listeners out there, thank God for you. You know, and I, I made a comment, hold your mirror up. Amen. A lot of times we hear the word of God and we start thinking about other people, focusing on other people instead of ourselves. Amen. But you have to hold your mirror up and see you. Work on you. Amen, somebody. The word of God is to bring revelation, is to bring, amen, illumination to us, is to enlighten us, uh, that we don't continue to walk in the error of our ways. Amen. And you do need a knife sharpener in your life to sharpen up your ways. Amen. To remind you or to bring to your remembrance, uh, you know, certain things that you have done. That's the love of God. Amen. So as we forgive, amen, and walk in God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, amen, tearing up those IOUs, amen, we move our lives forward. We're able to work together, love together, pray together, amen, honor God, amen, and it's a blessing of the Lord how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, amen, in unity, amen, in unity, amen, and so we thank God that we would allow brotherly love to what? To continue. To continue by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have what love one towards amen one another so the greatest lover the greatest forgiver amen it has forgiven us of all of our sins amen Jesus Christ our high priest amen and so we can forgive because he has forgiven us amen of all that he's done in our life and so that's due to somebody no matter what they've done uh, no matter how many times they have done it, we are still yet commanded to forgive them. Amen. And so forgiveness is an order. It's a tool. It's a weapon that we should carry throughout the whole of our lives. And so many people are dealing with this issue today in the, in, in the day and time in which we live. Different situations, different circumstances, different things that come across their pathway of life. Amen. And so some people are, you know, just stuck, you know, in that bitterness, stuck in that anger, stuck in that resentment. And they do more harm to, the, to themselves. Amen. The other person could be moved on. Amen. Forgiven, loving, say, hey, that's over, that's done with. Amen. Can we, can we be friends? Amen. Can we be friends? Amen. Can we still continue to love and be pitiful, to be merciful, to be kind, the affection one towards another? Amen. And so people that have separated and split, you know, churches, parted ways, ministry, leaders, businesses you know all kind of things in families and homes and then we see stuff in our government and in our world as a whole and somebody just need to let it go <laughs> amen for your own physical and spiritual health your emotional health amen and uh and so god is watching and so you do right because it is right amen and you honor god's word no matter what nobody else is doing or saying you make sure you right and everything amen i will believe i believe will be all right and it will work together for good to those that really truly love God and those that are called according, uh, amen, to uh, his purpose. It's such a freedom. It's such a liberty. Amen. When you walk in forgiveness and you walk in love, you don't got no ill towards nobody. You know, nothing in your heart towards nobody. It's good. Amen. Somebody say it's all good. <laughs> amen. It's freedom. I'm telling you, it's freedom. Amen. It's some real freedom in, in walking in love and forgiveness. Amen. So teach your children that. Amen. Your grandchildren. Amen. And people that will hear your voice. When they come to you with problems and those things, and those words, you know, uh, hurt and wounds. Amen. Forgiveness is in order. Amen. One of the things where God healed us, amen, through, uh, you know, ministry hurt um, is forgiveness. You got to let it go. You got to forgive that person. You know, and there was a time that I didn't want to. <laughs> I want it, I did, I wanted revenge and retaliation. Amen. Somebody said, I want them to hurt just as much as they hurt me. Come on here. And certain things do take a look. Lord, come on, be honest with yourself. You know you wanted to do something and say something, and the Holy Spirit arrested you, you know. And uh, so it took a little bit of time, amen, for us, you know, to get over, to get through, to say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> that ain't right, God. You know, I shoot, I need to pray. I, I called a hit man in over here, boy. I know some people, you know. But you'd be surprised how the devil get in a person's mind like that, you know. And um, 
That spirit of offense, I'm, I'm telling you, is extremely dangerous. And bitterness and just holding on to stuff. And how many know death and life is in the power of your tongue? Amen. So we encourage you to what? To speak life. Amen. To speak life. No, no matter you know how emotional that you are, speak life. Bless and curse not. Come on, say that. Bless. Bless and curse not. Amen. Bless and curse not. Amen. Bless and curse not. That's what the Lord commanded, amen, us to do. Amen. All right. Well, um, I do want to um, share with you and, and give you some of the things God's given me uh, for this next um, month or so heading toward the close of the year. We're, we're done. Amen. You can um, disconnect that. Thank you all for joining us by way of Facebook Live. Uh, we love you to life. We pray the blessings of God. Amen. Upon you like never before. We are Grace and Truth Global Church. And uh, we love you to life. Be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, the Lord allowed me to come across...